Today we're driving the 2022 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. This has a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 152 horsepower. That engine is mated to a continuously variable transmission. It's all wheel drive with Mitsubishi's super all wheel control. It has yaw control. McPherson strut front suspension, multi-link rear suspension. Um, yeah, we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, leather seats, a couple of sunroofs. Let's walk you around this refreshed Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross, show you what it's like inside and out. We'll take it for a drive, do a sound system test, all the usual stuff. It has just a lot of design. Exterior design, they said yes. <laughs> More of it. There's a whole lot going on here on the exterior. Um, we've got red accents. This is the top trim SEL Premium. So MSRP is around $29,000. As tested, it's about thirty-four dollars We've got a lot of extra stuff on the Monroney. We'll throw that in the description so you guys have an idea of what this Eclipse Cross entails. But this starts around $23,000 or thereabouts. And uh, you can get into one of these pretty cheaply and pretty inexpensively. In the rear hatch, we have quite a bit of cargo space. Mitsubishi even gives us a compact spare tire with a jack. And uh, what is this bag? We have a roadside assistance kit. This looks fun, what's in here? Oh, all sorts of good stuff. We've got bungee cables, a screwdriver, pliers, an emergency blanket, a hand squeeze flashlight, reflectors, look at that. I haven't seen a roadside assistance kit that thorough in a long time. We even get a cargo cover. You will soon discover over the course of this video that this Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross has just about everything you need. It's got all the stuff. Take a look at the Monroney here. One thing I like about Mitsubishi is they really put everything on their Monronis. Look how much text, how many things are listed on here. We don't get Monronis like this with this many words. It even lists dome light as a feature in the interior, glove box, assist grips, SEL badge. It has windows, look at that. You can see this has the SEL touring package for 2100 bucks, the exterior package, the hood badge that's black, welcome package, and the popular value package, making for a total MSRP of 34 grand. This Eclipse Cross gets 25 miles to the gallon in a city, 26 on the highway, so not the most fuel efficient. It's about a 3,500 pound vehicle. Let's take a look in the back seat. Pretty spacious, looks pretty good upon first impressions. We have a lot of room to stretch out and put our feet under the front seats. We have heated rear seats and a little cigarette lighter port. Two mat pockets, driver and passenger. Stadium seating, you can kind of see over the front seats. Plenty of headroom. A little cup holder action back there for a compact, smaller crossover. Pretty spacious, easy to get in and out of too. Nice ingress and egress. Let's take a look under the hood at this 1.5 liter turbo. Look at that, very accessible, very easy to work on. Everything is just right there, a lot of space around the components. There's a little plastic cover, but for the most part, you can see how serviceable this engine will be. A little strut tower brace there too. We also have a decent amount of ground clearance in this Eclipse Cross, eight inches to be exact. And we get paddle shifters. Even though this is a continuously variable transmission, it has a simulated eight speed. You can see we also have a head up display that is just kind of projected in this window here. You have really easy access to the controls. You can change the brightness, you can change the height, or you can turn it all off, which is what we're gonna do for this video um, like that. It opens and closes very dramatically. So, one complaint with the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross and with a lot of other Mitsubishi products, 
every time you start up the car and plug in your phone, it's going to ask you if you want to enable Apple CarPlay. And you hit always enable, and every time it still asks you if you want to enable it. Well, let's say you forget to do that, or you're in a hurry, you plug your phone in, you set off, you start up the vehicle, you get going. Oh no, I can't press anything on the screen. I'm completely locked out of my buttons. Well, you have to come to a complete stop all over again to get access to your screen. You can even hit the home and nav button, but this, this warning message is still up there. So we're gonna to come to a stop and we're gonna hit enable Apple CarPlay. I've experienced this in a couple other Mitsubishis and it's the same story here. I wish they would update that. And uh, here we go, now we can enter Apple CarPlay. You have to do this every time you start the car. You get into the habit of it after a little while, but uh, sometimes it can be a little bit irritating. Otherwise, on the interior, we have a lot of physical controls and buttons. Nobody does new car old as well as Mitsubishi. Uh, we have some designs here. The steering wheel design has been around for quite a while. We've got a few blank switches smattered throughout the interior, but for the most part in this SEL Premium, everything is covered. Traditional shifter, no weird rotary dials or buttons. A decent amount of space in here. Smaller sized cup holders. We have an electronic parking brake, heated seats, a heated steering wheel, an eco mode button. I mean, it, they keep it simple. It's very usable. Um, you can easily turn on and off lane keep assist, traction control, collision mitigation right here. Your mirror controls are right on the door panel right here. All four windows are auto up down, which is fantastic. We get a nice glove box situation too with a little space above for your user manual. I like how everything is kind of lined in red and padded. They even have kind of a little emergency kit in here. Look at this. You have bandages and gauze in your Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. I mean, you're really ready for adventure in this thing. Gosh, Doug DeMiro would have a heyday with this car. Let's check out the reverse camera. Reverse camera, not so good. 360 camera though, quite good. Shows you what you need to. Reverse camera is a little bit off center. That always bugs me because I can never quite center my vehicles well, but the 360 cam makes up for that. You can see it's a little bit to the left of the license plate. All right, I think that pretty much covers what I want to talk about on the interior. We've got a few different views here in our center digital display. Um, we're just gonna leave it on super all wheel control so we can see how that distribution is being done. Let's take this Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross on the road and see what it's like to drive. We even have yaw control with this all wheel drive system. Pretty cool. So we'll get to the controversial bit. This has the name Eclipse in it, and I'm sure that's gonna trigger some people. Mitsubishi kind of brought back the Eclipse name, and what did they do it in? They did it in a crossover. Well, I don't know. We have yet to see if they will make anything with the Eclipse name that is worthy of that title. For now though, if you just ignore the fact that it's called an Eclipse, or has Eclipse in the name, this is a pretty decent little crossover. It's surprising. Um, I've enjoyed driving it this week. It's been very easy to live with on a daily basis. It's very user friendly. Besides the little Apple CarPlay weirdness that happens every time you start up the car, there really isn't too much that's disagreeable about this car. It's not the best looking, it's not maybe the best value, but it seems like something that would be pretty reliable, pretty easy to live with. You have a nice high driving position, it's comfortable. The engine and transmission are very smooth. It is a CVT, but the engine doesn't feel super stressed when you're into it. It's a, it's well calibrated, well tuned. It's turbocharged, it only has 152 horsepower, but it puts down its power pretty well considering that it's all wheel drive and about 3,500 pounds. And the CVT doesn't whir away too much. It kind of keeps things under control. It is a little bit noisy over bumps. You get some impact noise. See the throttle response. I mean, it's by no means fast, but it's probably enough power for those who buy this car. Rides pretty well composed. 
and see how this handles. Ooh, very neutral, very nice. Yeah, on throttle, the front end tucks in a little bit. I can feel that super all wheel control. Yeah, there's really not a lot of power here for highway cruising or passing. Under 50, 60 miles per hour, it's okay, but once you get onto the open road at higher speeds, that 150 horsepower turbocharged 1.5 liter feels a bit asthmatic. We do have paddle shifters though, so we can control a little bit of that. <laughs> there is a little bit of wind noise at speed too. the fake shifts are pretty responsive though. Let's see if wind noise goes away if we close the sunroofs. We even have a rear sun shade control right there and the, for the back seat passengers. Wind noise sounds about the same. How about the screen? You have a nice quick access button to turn it between day and night mode. Go in and look at some of the info. We have a bunch of info. See our climate control, which is just called air conditioner. Fuel consumption over time. These are kind of old school Gran Turismo style gauges. And then of course we have Apple CarPlay. It's a little bit of a laggy screen. It's not the most responsive, but it gets the job done. Waze is struggling a little bit here, trying to find itself. Let's talk a little bit about cruise control. So there's no lane keep assist or lane centering system, just lane departure warning. You can easily turn that on or off right there, and it'll just give you a little beep when you stray out of your lane. Cruise control is very easy to operate, super simple ergonomics. You can press up and down for one mile an hour changes or hold for five mile an hour increments. It's super easy and quick to use. You can change your following distance right there. Um, doesn't get any easier. And some people may not like the simulated gear shifts, but I think it adds a bit more normalcy to this car and it reduces the constant drone of a CVT. Some turbocharged engines mated to CVTs are tuned pretty poorly and it is a little bit of a difficult thing to get right, but I think Mitsubishi's done a pretty good job with this. Does a nice job utilizing the torque, low down, and um, no weirdness with shifts or rough response from the engine. Let's see how this super all-wheel control handles this corner here. This all-wheel drive system does a pretty good job distributing power. You can see down here in this little graphic what it's doing, where it's sending power front to back. And the fact that it can do yaw control right to left is pretty impressive too. This probably has a little bit of uh, off-road capability. Let's do a quick zero to 60 here, see what happens. all she's got. All right, we'll merge onto this highway entrance ramp, downshift a couple gears. It is going to auto upshift for us, which makes sense. <laughs> a little bit all over the place there. We're 
just cruising. Let's set our cruise control. Change our following distance. And let's listen to this Mitsubishi power sound system. Look at that. Go into our sound system test track playlist. Unfortunately, the sound system is quite a bit of a letdown. Uh, super bass heavy, but the rest of it, the trebles, the midtones, uh, not much is going on. It's pretty poor. Um, so unfortunately for your 35 grand in this Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross, you're gonna be disappointed by the sound system. But this probably isn't the one to get. I would probably swing for kind of a mid trim around the mid 20s would probably be pretty good value. Um, so how do we sum up this Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross? I think there is a lot to like here if you want something that is simple, free of all of the technological shackles that we see in so many modern cars. There's no silly iPad screen. You get Apple CarPlay, you get Android Auto, um, and that's about it. I mean, this is a formula that Mitsubishi has been following for quite a while, and you're not getting the same sexy design or maybe features or comfort or materials as a lot of other vehicles in this class. Um, it is pretty spacious though and reasonably comfortable to drive. Dynamically it's okay. The all-wheel drive system works quite well if you're looking for something you know uh, that can get through the snow or do a little bit of off-road duty. You never know with Mitsubishi. Sometimes there's a, they're a little bit of an underdog and they could surprise you and that has definitely been the case this week with this car. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. You can see more videos on this car on the Wine River Magazine YouTube channel. And Charlie from Daily Motor will also have a review and a sound system test on his channel, Daily Motor. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.